So now in this lecture, I'm going to talk about classical radiation theory. And uh, for this, I am following the book uh, by S. P. Puri. The title of the book is Classical Electrodynamics. And uh, in this under this part of classical radiation theory, I am going to first of all talk about Leonard weaker potential. So I divided this into three parts. So first of all, I divided this into three parts. So first part is consist of scalar and vector potential. Then in the second part, I will talk about retarded potential. Then after discussing these two points, I finally try to discuss Linard weaker potential. So let us start with the scalar and the vector potential. But how do we define scalar potential and the vector potential? We talk about scalar potential. So, since I know that the electric field due to continuation, continuous distribution of charge can be written as the electric field due to continuous distribution of charge. charge can be written as that E R must be equal to rho R R minus R prime divided by R minus R prime mod Q and d cube are the volume element, it's integral. And rho r is the volume charge density, or simply charge density. Now since we know that from vector algebra, that r minus r prime divided by r minus r prime mod cube, it must be equal to minus del. <coughs> R minus R prime mod. So this is a standard result from vector algebra. And if I use this operation here, then the relationship for this electric field 
due to volume charge density will become minus del integral d cube r prime so now if we take curl on both sides then what will happen taking curl on both sides then what will happen this is del cross e it must be equal to minus del cross now this is basically it's like a scalar term also we know that that del cross del f where f is a scalar it is standard result from vector algebra this is equal to 0 so that means this whole of the quantity will become 0 So that's why we can say or the, we can define phi as a function of r. It can be expressed as and as this is a scalar because that's why this will become 0. Also we know that curl of electric field must be equal to 0 if the conservative field so keeping all these things in mind, this is equal to right. So the this we have defined as a scalar potential. This is known as a scalar potential. Right. So this is a way that how scalar potential is defined. Now let us come to the Another thing that is vector potential. Next is the vector potential, and uh, we will define vector potential for the magnetic field. So now, using pi Severs law. We can define magnetic field B due to current I circulating in a line element. So this I is defined as 1 by C. This is by Severs law. This is a line element. This can be written as I over C and DL cross R minus R prime divided by R minus R prime mod Q. But this can be expressed as this part can be written as this is minus del 1 over R minus R mod. Right? So that means this is equal to I over C del after doing some mathematical manipulation. This 
this will become gel cross dl over r minus r prime and this leads to I'm not going to talk about all these things in more detail because my intention is to talk about uh, the not bigger potential. So what is happening in this case? Or uh, if what I will do. It is defined, it is prime density. And current density is relating to current as this or we can express it in this manner. So that means this is replaced by del cross on y c del cross one by c divided by this minus this right so here it is the current density So now here, the magnetic field can be expressed in this manner. Also we know that, or uh, let us recombine all various results as we have derived that this is equal to del cross 1 by C this divided by R minus R prime mod its integral also we know that del dot B is equal to 0 and another thing which we have also known to us that del cross B is equal to 4 pi over C J R. Now, if this will happen and keeping this in mind, it must be equal to 0. This is possible if and only if, means this is possible if and only if B can be expressed as a as curl of some vector, vector potential or the vector field. Because we know that del dot del cross A is some vector potential then it must be equal to 0. So that means if B can be expressed in, 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 in this form then we can say that its divergence will be equal to 0. So it means if I compare the magnetic field which I have obtained from Wyatt's Severs law then this quantity seems like sitting seems to be like sitting in place of A. So therefore this is known as the vector potential. So that means now we will define vector potential as 1 by C integral of J R T cube R prime over R minus R prime mod. So this is the way that how we have defined the vector potential. So now we are having two terms. 
one is the scalar potential and another is the vector potential the expression for the scalar potential is this in terms of charge density and for it it is for here it is one by c a smart so these are the two expressions which i am getting now next thing about which i am going to talk about that is the retarded potential retarded potential so in the next lecture i am going to talk about the retarded potential